Hey everyone, this is Andrew with an AWS tutorial series on setting up an API gateway endpoint to execute a Lambda function. In this tutorial, I'll walk you through creating an API gateway endpoint via Lambda, as well as inside of API gateway itself. If you haven't checked out my previous tutorial on creating a Lambda function, you can click the link in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do is we're going to jump over to our Lambda function and the first way we're going to create an API gateway endpoint is we're going to do it through a trigger inside of our Lambda function. So if we jump inside of our Lambda function and we run a quick test, we're going to see that this is going to pull the RSS feed for Amazon's US East 1's status page. And so you can see here all it's returning is a simple JSON formatted message that the service is operating normally. And you can see my console logs from the previous tutorial. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to jump over to our trigger section and we're going to add a trigger. Now inside of creating a trigger, we're going to click this empty box and we're going to select API Gateway. We're going to name our API Lambda Microservice and again you can name this whatever you'd like. Our resource name is going to be Lambda Example. Our method is going to be Git because we're just going to hit it via the URL. Our deployment stage will be production and our security is going to be wide open because we want to just hit this from the open net without having any sort of credentials. So we'll go ahead and click Submit. Now that our endpoint has been triggered, we can technically click that link right there and it's going to take us directly to uh, that JSON formatted message. But what I want to do is I want to jump over to API Gateway and I want to show you that you can see they've automatically created an API for me called Lambda Microservice. It's been created by AWS Lambda. And if we jump inside here, we're going to see that we have a resource name of Lambda Example and it's a GET request. So this is very cool stuff here. You can do all of this right within Lambda and you really don't need to jump into Amazon's API gateway at all unless you need to do something you know, special as far as authorization is concerned. So you can see our integration request here is going to be from Lambda. You can see it's in US East 1 and you can see that we're executing a Lambda function called Lambda example. So it's nice that they sort of set all this up for us. Now what I want to do is I want to run a quick test and I'm just going to go ahead and test this endpoint. So you can see just like running the test inside of Lambda, that we get inside of our body, we get a JSON formatted message that the service is operating normally. And so same thing here, if I go back to our triggers and we go ahead and click this link, you're going to see that you know now we can actually call this API endpoint within our browser and we get that JSON formatted message back. And again, this is all related to the code that was uploaded into our Lambda function. Now if we jump over to monitoring, we can see that I've invoked this. So I've invoked it not only from API Gateway, but I've also invoked it from the web browser. And you can see that I've got an invocation count of four and that my invocation duration is going down because I'm executing it more often. Now what I want to do is I want to show you how to create your own resource and your own method. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to Actions and we're going to create a resource. Now this resource, we're just going to name it a New Lambda Example. And now we're going to create a method inside of new Lambda example, the same thing, it's a get request. So all I want to do here is I just want to show you that you can not only create this with a trigger inside of Lambda, but you could also create it with an API gateway. So here we're going to select Lambda, we're going to select US East 1. And as I start typing in Lambda example, it's going to pop up here. It's going to recognize that I've already created that Lambda example. And we're going to go ahead and click save. We're going to give it some permissions. And now what we need to do is we need to deploy this to our production stage. So to clarify some things, your staging environments inside of API Gateway can really be named whatever. Typically you're gonna have dev, staging, and prod. Uh, and this is so that each one has their own API endpoint so you can test some things and you don't have to push it out to production. So what we're gonna do since we only have one deployment stage, we're just gonna deploy it right to our production environment. And we're gonna go ahead and give it a description. Now we're deploying a new endpoint. And we'll click deploy. And just like that, we have a new endpoint in our production API gateway. So now what we do is if we jump over to this URL, and now we can see that we can call new Lambda example, and it gives us the exact same information as that Lambda example URL. So you can see here how you can create multiple different resources to call the exact same Lambda function or maybe a different Lambda function. So you can see here if we jump over to stages, we can see our different endpoints in there. We can see our deployment history. We can take a look at all sorts of different details about our API, which is really nice. API Gateway also gives us the ability to set different authorizers. So we can set custom authorizers to talk to different Lambda regions, to different Lambda functions, to have different execution roles, 
all sorts of good things like that. Again, this is a little bit too much in detail for this tutorial. I just wanted to show you how to get this up and running and sort of walk you through all the ins and outs of API Gateway. You can see we can also create different models. These are using the JSON schema. So as people are calling your different endpoints, they can follow a specific schema. And then we also have a dashboard so we can see the API calls, the latency, the integration latency, all sorts of good things. Because again, this doesn't necessarily have to be integrated with uh, Lambda. It could be integrated with your own API that's sitting on an EC2 server. It could be a website that you're hosting elsewhere. There's a ton of different ways this could be used. So that concludes our tutorial on using Amazon's API Gateway with a Lambda function. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. And please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much.